Hey Taurus, happy new year. Welcome to uh, Eight of Cups Tarot. Uh, Taurus, I kind of had some complications. I wanted to start your reading a little bit ago. Um, there were complications downloading the Leo video, which gave me a little time. And because I have a Capricorn Ascendant and I'm feeling like the immense need to get some stuff done and like completed and out, um, I went about this process a little differently and I'm really glad I did because it got me to a place where I had a couple extra minutes to really meditate and hone in and understand what these cards are because they were, they're different. And uh, the way I'm interpreting them is a little bit different than I normally would. And then I'm looking at why and it's because Taurus, you have Uranus in your first. And so... You are the sign of the essence, the essence of practicality, um, earthly matters, you know, although Venetian and um, you know how to appeal to the senses and, and it is it is almost like a watered down version of the earth sign, but it is also the bull. And by the bull, I like to use the analogy, when Uranus meets Taurus, it, it's like these small electrical proddings like you used to prod an actual bull. And sometimes they don't move right away. But when the bull starts to move, that is a momentum that you don't want to get in the way of. It is a force to be reckoned with to say the very least. And so, uh, Taurus, it's been mm, about a year and a half now that you've had Uranus with you on your sun or on your ascendant. And right now, with this stellium, this huge stellium in the Capricorn house, it's forming this trine and it's forming this energy that's really activating that Uranus energy. And so it is our Tauruses that are really being ignited with change and excitement. And these are sudden and unexpected and enlightenment and uh, like messages from other realms or other areas. And so while I was meditating, I was getting so many really random messages for you. And I'm not going to share all of them with you. First of all, we'll be here all day. Second of all, I think they were probably a series of things just com confirming that the messages are for you. But listen, you'll know it's for you. I, I say this all the time. If you feel tingly, if you feel butterflies in your stomach, if you get goosebumps it's something I say then take that as that extra special confirmation that this reading is yours you should be listening to it uh, because otherwise you know if you don't feel like it applies to you don't make it fit do not ever give anyone that type of power you know if I were which is not something I would normally do but if I were to predict a third party situation going on in your relationships like you cannot be that person that runs to your mate who is uh trustworthy and emotionally fulfilling to you and just start to freak out like they're having an affair like you cannot make those situations um you can't give them power in your mind so lean in in your intuition a little uh this reading's a little bit of a wild ride uh, first of all, Spirit wanted me to tell you to pay attention to your dreams. And I think on some levels they meant um, it's time to start really realizing what your dreams are and, and what you need to achieve them. Um, but also on a level of pay attention to what you're dreaming about. Like there's messages in there for you. And then they prompted me actually to tell you about a vision that came to me in a dream yesterday, which again, I would not normally share this. I, I thought it was personal, but maybe it is for you guys. Um, as 
Mars started to move through Scorpio, which feels like it's been about 14 years now, but it was back in October and November. As Mars started to move through there, I was seeing a lot of visions of spiders and, you, and even manifestations of it in my real life, like like random things like I would think of a spider and then all of a sudden there would literally be one coming down from the ceiling as I was walking down a set of steps. It was definitely very profound messages for me. And then I didn't see them for a while. I think, I'm not sure why, through the middle degrees of Mars, those visions kind of settled down. But now we are at the end of Mars. And Mars is ingressing from your seventh house into your eighth house. Um, and your eighth house is transformation. So I saw an image of this really disgusting big spider. Um, and it was sitting on a table actually next to like a, a dish that had like a dessert on it. Weird, I know. And um, but this spider was it was big and it was upside down and its legs were kind of up like this so it wasn't dead it wasn't that curled up dead spider thing it was kind of just like loose like this and it was just a vision of it and and when I woke up I thought well I've I've never I've never seen a live spider just lay on its back like that I've never heard of that in my life so I literally started to google it and I found, you know, these weird question and answer sites about people that own tarantulas. And apparently, now listen, this is very scorpionic energy. Apparently, as tarantulas grow into their full size, they molt. I had no idea. And so for several hours to a few days, they don't eat and they don't move. They lay on their backs like this and they emerge and it looks like they're bursting and they emerge from their original exoskeleton and they actually form a new one. And it is a form of a death process. And if you disturb them during this process, they could die. So it's very important to leave them alone, give them their space, and allow them to transform. Please know, I'm not sure why Spirit was so adamant about me sharing that story with you, but if it applies, if you could understand it, please take it and also you can keep the spider because I don't like them. Um, then spirit showed me a little, uh, like a little kid's lunchbox and backpack. And they said, it's time to go back to school. Um, but then they also showed me visions of like universities and stuff. But I think the idea behind it being like, you know, like a little, I don't even know, like a Spider-Man backpack or something. I think I think there's a learning curve with Uranus in your first that says you have to go back and relearn some of the ways that you're living your life, right? Because this conjunction is in your ninth house of your beliefs. Um, it's time to go back to school. It's time to see things from a different perspective. There may be a lot changing for you in terms of your higher education, your religious views, your structures, your boundaries within that. Uh, ninth house could be a lot of things. It could also, ninth house is a manifestation house and it is your home of maybe a second marriage or um, your third child. And it's a house of travel and kind of exploring taking down the boundaries and exploring other countries, faraway places, foreign things, uh, kind of an evolution in your life. And it is also a house of, ironically, a duality of law and abiding by the laws, laws of the universe, laws of our country, 
um, but also breaking free of them, um, overcoming them in a way. I, I wouldn't say that you're going to overcome the spiritual laws, but finding the true perspective and how they work and really getting to know them and having the courage to explore them. Um, ninth house is a house of Sag, and right now Mars is moving into Sag, and I feel like um, as Mars leaves your seventh house of partnerships and moves into your eighth house of intimacy, you're starting to get a really good idea of what you have in partnerships and relationships. This could be work partnerships, uh, best friends, husbands, uh, true soulmates and partners. And it's kind of the idea of what you have already and what you valued in the past and what you need now and what you're going to value in your future. And I think that's where this big revolution inside of you is occurring. And again, remember you have your North Node in Cancer. So I think Tauruses are really also learning how to connect and how to communicate with their heart, uh, with emotions, with feelings. They're starting to really embrace that you know, I think Tauruses have a rap of always trying to make everything look and feel really beautiful, you know, appealing to all of the senses, appealing to how things smell and taste and look and feel. Um, but now it's time to get acquainted with our words and to use the profound words, to say the profound things things to let people in to explore you and where you are willing to explore others. And then of course we have, as I said, the Saturn Pluto, which is breaking down barriers and old beliefs and building new ones. Meanwhile, Venus touring your 10th house, which is an interesting placement because it's almost as if you're starting to detach from um, restricting, you know, it's, it's kind of like that paternal, very strict boundaries on how you should look in the outside world or how you should act in the outside world, what your reputation is. And, you know, I think with Venus and Aquarius there, you're giving it the big, you know... I don't really give a shit what you think. I'm going to just be me now. And a lot of the signs are following kind of this revolutionary process, and you are certainly not um, an exception to that. And then with Pisces and Neptune in your 11th house, that's really feeling this ultimate connection within friendships, within groups, without hu within humanitarian projects or which is then leading you into activating Chiron in your 12th house which is a pretty serious transition because Chiron is giving you the courage right we're going to have a set of very specific squares where Chiron and the moon together will be squaring all this Capricorn energy and I think what's going to happen is it's going to help you to kind of really road like they're showing me like a um a rototiller like in a garden like really digging up and loosening up all this clumped up dirt where this energy was stuck and allowing the water to kind of flow through it because right now Taurus what you need to heal those wounds is emotion it is the process it's it is a safe place for you to be emotional with others. Um, it's also, Spirit says, it's a really good time while you're working on breaking down some of these borders. Um, it is an excellent time to kind of explore your astrology, explore talk therapy, explore psycho analysis 
um, human design, even past life regressions and hypnosis would be extremely beneficial to you at this time. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm so sorry. Um, and then they also gave me this vision. I want you guys to be able to see the cards here. And then they gave me this vision of a backyard that's kind of fenced in. And that was interesting because they were kind of taking me through this backyard and they were like, oh, well, I like it. I like the privacy, but look at, look at it all around. All the leaves get caught all around this and it's a pain to clean up and it's causing me extra work. And the idea was these boundaries that you put up, these borders around yourself, maybe even thoughts like, I'm afraid of airplanes. I don't want to travel. I don't, I don't, I'm, I want to go to school, but I don't want to have to leave home or, you know, some of these things where you've actually just caused your own self limits and that by doing that, by setting limits for yourself, you're actually causing more work um, and a lack of flow of that energy to come through. So they want you to start breaking down these walls, breaking down these barriers and these borders that you put around yourself. And then they showed me milk and cookies. And there was absolutely no real explanation before. It, and I, it actually made me hungry. Like, I want to go down and get some milk and cookies, ironically. Um, but I, I think it was like, you know, again, going back to that theme of like, where's your safe place, Taurus? Like, where is that safe place to go out and explore the world and then come home afterwards and have a plate of milk and cookies and like still feel at home? Where is that balance between exploring the external and still having the comforts of home and the internal love? And I think that's something that Taurus is working towards this month. And again, Mars being the big theme for a lot of these readings, you know, it's really not the five planets that we have in Capricorn. All of these readings are really pointing to Mars right now. And I think we're resolving things and then really the big boom or the reward, the rewards for what we're resolving now with Mars is when Mars crosses this point of this conjunction, um, which is about up until the middle of next year. Like by the summer, Mars will have cleared that conjunction point as well. And so you will have a better idea or begin to reap the rewards, um, begin to see manifestation of your actions at that time. So Mars is always the activator of every aspect. It happens and then Mars crosses over where it happened and that's the boom, that's the action, that's the manifestation that's bringing it into reality. Uh, Mars is always that masculine energy that goes out and he gets it and he brings it back home to us. So that being said, they also asked me to tell you with when Mars moves through Scorpio and then through Sag, it is a quest for truth, right? It is always a quest for our own personal truth. And so they wanted me to tell you to obtain some form of a clear quartz crystal to carry with you. Um, and this is for clarity. Because I think Taurus has been a victim of people's promises, empty promises, or maybe... Taurus is being misunderstood. Maybe feel people feel as though they're making pro promises that they aren't. So protect yourself with the clear quartz, which will bring you clarity in your communication. You'll be able to speak your thinking, what you're thinking and feeling uh, freely. Um, with clarity, clear up communication issues and misunderstandings that you're having with others. Milk and cookies. So take time, 
get back to basics, do the things that you enjoyed as your as a child. There's a lot of those themes I'm seeing with the kids' school backpack and the milk and cookies. Like maybe it's time to do that maternal nurturing for yourself. Uh, to allow yourself to be a little bit childlike. Yeah, childlike. So, getting into your cards, Taurus, um, again, a very interesting spread. And I'm actually going to move the camera in a moment because I want you to take a look at this activation of the solar plexus that's going to occur within the first two weeks of January. Uh, when I see a lot of yellow like this, multiple cards in a row, um, a lot of themes about, I, I see a strengthening of the solar plexus. I see a strengthening of the healthy part of our ego and our intuition. And so Taurus, we're starting off the spread with you as the Queen of Cups. So I think maybe somehow in the midst of the Gemini full moon to the Capricorn uh, solar eclipse, there was some kind of a softening within you or a softening around you, uh, a realization that your emotions and what you have to give are extremely important and they're extremely loving. And um, this kind of reminds me of realizing what you really have to offer, okay? And maybe for a long time, you thought what you had to offer was financial stability or what you had to offer was um, excitement or, you know, however you presented yourself in relationships before, you're starting to realize that what you're craving or what you're wanting to bring is a very emotional attachment, a very emotional connection with someone. Uh, but we have the chariot upside down. And so it looks to me like... There's absolutely no movement in this situation whatsoever. And it was actually laid out like this, Taurus. So this is you and this is uh, someone else. This is someone, a significant other in your life, a boyfriend, husband, a work associate, business partner, someone important in your life, but your back is turned to them. And your back is turned to them because you need an emotional connection. And the King of Pentacles, that's not what he's bringing to the table. You are not looking at him and he is not looking at you. And besides, you have to know that a queen cannot attach herself to the vibration of a knight. It's just physically impossible. So not only is he not bringing you something that's up to your level, but he's bringing it too slow. And there's a lack of passion and a lack of emotion there. It, it may be a promise of stability, but it's not actually coming through. Neither of you are taking any movement in this situation. It's, it's a stalemate. And so with that, you begin to realize Seven of Cups. I mean, I'm sorry, Seven of Swords. And the Four of Wands in reverse with the King of Swords. King of Swords. Again, the way this is laid out, and I'm going to show you, 
this king of swords is connected to the queen of cups look at the backgrounds look at the matching blue they're both draped in in a white okay um she delivers love and he delivers truth. And so you're finding your balance between that feminine um the feminine connection to the emotions and the masculine ability to discern what is real. Okay? So it's a combination of these two that you are embodying within this situation with this person. And it really is beautiful because the king of cup or the king of swords comes in here and he said I'm not allowing anyone to take what isn't theirs anymore, to steal from me, to deceive, to lie, to manipulate. I am getting rid of people that I feel are using me and not giving anything in return. But there's sadness in that because I think with this opportunity, I think, I think what you thought in your heart, in your emotions, I think what you thought that Knight of Pentacles was going to bring you was the Four of Wands. But it wasn't. It wasn't because when you make the mind over heart decision, you realize that that Knight of Pentacles was just stealing from you, just taking and using you for your energy, for your love, and he was not giving anything back to you. So it really and truly is a realization that um, something very deceptive looked really, really beautiful. And it took going within and it took deciding that you deserved more than that. And so... Here we have the sun. And this is deciding to be completely independent, to be, this is a lot of that theme that I saw with the milk and cookies and the backpack and the, you know, you see a small child and he's vulnerable. And also he's riding a horse naked with flowers on his hair like this is a hippie child this is the inner happiness the inner strength that is the card of of leo and in leo we find our illumination and so i think that we find illumination when we stop coming from a place of lack from a fear of poverty, from a fear of not having enough, from a fear of no one understands me and no one loves me, okay? When you drop that, you start to light up everything that you do have, everything that you do have to offer, okay? And once that happens, you can achieve that balance that you need for real love for real connection but the lovers and this is a gemini card this is accepting your duality and i think that's part of again the uranus in taurus is that there are parts of you that want to seek and explore and um there is a deep need for freedom but at the same time a real need for connection and by allowing your true self and your true needs to be reestablished to being able to explain in your current relationships or 
leave these relationships that don't allow this for you anymore. Just in, in being yourself and being strong and independent in yourself is where you can truly connect to others. It's, it's in that balance that you have between those two very different worlds, which is what really happens when Uranus goes through our sign. And Taurus, you are in major manifestation, manifestation mode right now. We all are with all this earth and this little bit of water. You know, it creates this really fertile ground. So you want to watch your thoughts because you can't be coming from a place of uh, victimhood or a place of lacking. Or, oh, that never works out for me or nobody ever likes me or that person would never want to date me. You know, if you keep coming at things from those types of thoughts, uh, you're going to get exactly what you want to manifest. And I want to show you that when I move these cards, I want to show you the center line going up because again, this duality, every card in the center is reversed and the cards on the outside are upright, um, except for that one. But I think that says a lot when you look at these, it's like the core of your issue is your internal beliefs and in, in how you need to change them and confront them. Chiron in your 12th house, that's where you are subconsciously sabotaging yourself. And you might think that you're taking steps ahead when really you're taking giant leaps backwards. And those are the cycles that have to end. There are cycles in your life that absolutely have to end. And if you do not end them by yourself, then the universe will have no choice but to step in and end them for you. Taurus, look at this. If these are the things that you're willing to give to a relationship, or if these are the type of energy that people are bringing to you within your relationships, you're going to keep reliving this karmic cycle. This up and down is, oh, he's the one. This is it this time. And then there's a smashing realization that he absolutely is not. And then you have to do the breakup thing and you have to do the hermit thing and you have to go in and you have to fix those wounds only to come out of it and do it all over again. Different person, same person, different face, right? Right, and these cycles have to end right now. So if you are not consciously ending them, the universe will for you. And it's always easier for you to do the work yourself, believe me. Right here, you have the Knight of Wands. And this, my friend, is a player card. This is someone who goes after things very passionately, very fast. This is your classic love bomber. And, uh, and this cycle has to end. Being attracted to a knight in general has got to stop. These are not people that can give you concrete things. They are not kings or emperors. They're simply knights. They're simply young and immature and they have their own cycles and their own karmic growth to go through. And, and just quite simply is no match for a queen and especially a queen of cups. A queen of cups wants to nurture and to love and to be best friends and to really share without boundaries this emotional existence. And the Knight of Wands probably just wants to get laid.
and a page of cups. Well, those are just fancy, meaningless words. That's someone who knows how to say the right things. Someone who is so charming and knows exactly how to compliment you and make you feel great. But it's not a good offer for a queen. What he's offering? There's a fish in it, okay? It's fishy. He's fishy. And really, again, I just have to reiterate the duality of you is your emotions and your discernment. This is this is you, Taurus. This is your ability to emotionally connect and, and cut off what isn't good for you. And you know the difference because you're a king, so you've mastered it. You have mastered this. And so meaningless offers, childish offers, these are beneath you. Trickery that's beneath you. It won't even match your vibration. And overall, Taurus, the overall outcome is the Ten of Pentacles. So all of these karmic relationships and all of these ways in which you're reforming your structures and your boundaries they're all for good reason, and that reason is the Ten of Pentacles. So you can get to the ultimate foundation so that you have all of the things that you need, Taurus, because Uranus is in Taurus, delivering quick messages, realizations, discoveries, emotional needs, dreams, this is all communication coming to you, coming from within you, that is going to show you the ways to get to that ultimate stability and that Ten of Pentacles. Can you see that layout, Taurus? This is correcting karma. And this may have a lot to do with how you treat others is ultimately what you've started getting in return as well. Um, and that could be the going back to school messages that I received that what you offer others is ultimately going to be what you get back in return. And so in a car time of karmic justice, this might be a real good time to change the way you approach things within your relationships and your expectations and to even out that give and take. In 40 minutes, I'm just going to draw a couple astrology cards for you. Sometimes they just kind of confirm the messages from the Rider White deck. three cards and I have to laugh because you got your seventh house of partners, your fifth house of creativity, and your twelfth house of escape. And so again, I want you to pay attention. Uranus in your first, in Taurus, means that you have Scorpio in your seventh, which is just what you went through with Mars. 
And so it may have brought you some realizations regarding how you treat others and the karma that you have between yourself and others. Your Uranus may have you striving for freedom, but that Scorpio in your seventh house is a definite need to deeply connect with someone emotionally. And again, along the same theme of breaking down those borders and those beliefs that you used to carry, um, that fifth house is asking you to kind of turn into your creativity a little. A little. Uh, go back to enjoying things like you did as a child because that's where you'll find your balance. And there has to be a balancing of this energy. And the 12th house spirit wants you to really, again, explore those subconscious patterns that you have. The places where you self-sabotage. And the reasons why. And it's probably why they spoke to me about therapy or past life regression. Really exploring that 12th house. And losing yourself to 12th house is how they communicate you with you through dreams as well. So if anything, take a minute, take some naps, uh, keep a notebook next to you. So right away when you wake up, maybe you can start writing your dreams down to try to remember them. It's always a great idea. Be also, avoid, um, avoid taking medications that block your dreams okay like Ambien or sleeping pills or even uh smoking a little weed that could really dim uh the messages that come in from spirit that are trying to talk to you so you know drinking anything it really numbs it that subconscious and in, in the way that it filters through your dreams you just don't remember them so You can't. Thank you, spirit. The animal card you picked is the spider. <laughs> oh, I didn't know why we were going there, or why they wanted me to share that with you, but now I know. Hilarious. My guides have the greatest sense of humor, too. They really think they're all, uh, they're glowing from that. Okay, spider, creator of prosperity through life's work and dharma. The spider is an ingenious creator. Its greatest gift is weaving the thread of dharma into a vast, intricate web that supports the spider and those around it both financially and spiritually. It is hard work, but the spider neither tires nor becomes impatient. This card reminds us creativity is everywhere. Be process-oriented rather than results-oriented, and soon your work becomes like the weaving of a magical, priceless tapestry, and then abundance follows. When in balance, you are appreciative, enthusiastic, and prosperous. When out of balance, discouraged, tired, and forlorn. And to bring into balance, playful and creative. And I also really feel like this is a confirmation of what I explained about the spider who is molting. So I think there's a transformation in how you bring about this abundance in your life. And it's no longer through detail, but it's about letting yourself explore and be creative and kind of connecting to creative realms. Turn on music, do some art, open your, and expand your mind a little. Um, because right now you're going in that phase where the old is dying and the new is emerging. And so let that old process die 
wish it goodbye and then really embrace the new side of you that's coming out the side of you that uranus is forcing you to connect with taurus that was a really amazing reading i wish you guys so much love through the month of january um stay posted for my sunday morning astrology rundown for the week and I'll be releasing the rest of the signs very shortly. Hopefully, I'll have them all out by the end of the week. I have a feeling Scorpio is holding on until Friday. So, we'll see. Okay, love you all, Taurus. Have a great one. Bye-bye.